Hi guys, welcome to this next lecture on making sequential circuits using clocked processes as a part of our VHDL lecture series. I would term this lecture as important because this lecture discusses the sequential circuits which are very commonly used in digital design as you know that most circuits are sequential in nature which work on clock so let's understand this lecture carefully so as part of today's lecture I will discuss the if-else statements which we saw previously how do we use if-else statements in clock processes we'll see some examples and then we'll see an important concept of how to use variables as part of a clocked process. So quickly just to go through the if statement we saw that if statement in the previous lecture that if condition 1 is true then a set of sequential statements are executed else if condition 1 is false and condition true is true then a set of sequential statements are executed and accordingly the else condition. Now we also saw that statements can be nested that you can write an if condition then and also start another if inside it and we saw that in the previous lecture. We also saw that if statements give you a priority logic and we try not to use more than three if you remember so now taking these if statements we need to define these if statements in a process remember I said that process we always write with a sensitivity list and then we write the process and all those signals that when change will trigger this process will trigger this process so that it can function like for example here we wrote a b and c so whenever a b or c change that time this process is executed now in processes there are two types of processes there is combinatorial and then there is clocked combinatorial process will generate combinational logic for example this one that I write process A, B and C and then I write X is assigned A and B or C. So I AND A and B and I OR it with C. So that's fine. This is fairly straightforward. But the clocked process basically when I have a signal that periodically changes with a rising edge or a falling edge again this is the rising edge this is the falling edge so how do I use that and specify that in VHDL the most basic type of a clock process is I specify a signal or input called CLK again this CLK is not a keyword please understand that it is not a keyword you can use CLK you can use CLK1 you can use also A B C whatever you would like but just for convenience purpose we call it CLK because it is as I said convenient or easy to understand so in my sensitivity list I would specify the signal CLK and then I would write a style of statement which says that if clock or CLK if clock tick event basically this is called a tick if clock tick event and clock equal to 1 basically a 
tick event in VHDL means that it's either a 0 to 1 in transition or a 1 to 0 transition. So it's either to 0 to 1 or 1 to 0 transition. That is what we mean by tick event. So this transition is basically a tick event. And when I say clock equal to 1 means it's a rising edge. Suppose if I would have specified clock equal to 0, it would have been a falling edge. Please understand that. So this one would be, you can guess what, a rising edge. So I say that if clock tick event and clock equal to 1, then Q should get D. Then I say end if and end process. This effectively gives me a hardware which is a D flip-flop. We know that D flip-flop that for every edge of the clock, this one is rising edge. So for every edge of the clock, the value that is present at the input is transferred to the output. So for example, if my input previously was 0, then my output will become 0 at the edge of the clock. So let's understand this rule a little clearer. What I'm trying to say is that whenever I have a signal assignment, which is like this, or an assign statement, that generates a flip-flop. So for example, if I would have written Q is assigned D, and I would have also written, let's say, M is assigned D, then effectively I would have gotten two flip-flops, one with output Q and the other with output M. So each assigned statement gives me one flip-flop. So the deal about writing a clock process is I write if clock tick event and clock equal to 1 or 0 I do not have an else condition. I don't have an else condition for a tick event if statement. So if I have an if statement which has an, a tick event condition like this, I cannot write an else condition for that because then that confuses my hardware and my compiler does not know what to do. So please be careful that the minute I write a tick event evaluation, if you give it an else clause, it will generate wrong hardware and that is bad design. Please understand that. However, please understand. However, I can write if reset equal to one, then out is assigned 0 else if I can write clock tick event and the clock process then I can write conditions here so I can have an if condition above I can have an if condition above a tick event condition but not below I cannot have one below please understand that so let's look at an example synchronous reset what is synchronous reset synchronous reset means first of all reset means that a signal when I act, give active at that time my output is zero so it will force the output to zero so synchronous means that the flip-flop will get reset on the active edge of the clock okay so that means that if my clock edge is there and my reset signal so let's say if this is reset and this is clock this would be my clock edge so if my reset is one at the same time at the edge of the clock then my output goes to zero 
so this is called as synchronous reset and how do we write it if clock tick event and clock equal to 1 I write this if condition inside the tick event so inside the clock process inside this clock condition if I write it inside this or under this if I write under the clock tick event condition then it becomes a synchronous reset which means that if reset is equal to 1 then Q is 0 else Q is D now what hardware that would make it would make a can you guess what a mux that if reset is equal to 1 then my input of the flip-flop is 0 which at the edge of the clock which at the edge of the clock this 0 will go here if reset is equal to 0 then my input to the flip-flop is my D signal which if for example if this is 1 then this would be 1 and my output would be 1 at the edge of the clock this is what we call as synchronous reset now if I want to make an asynchronous reset that is whenever reset is equal to 1 my out is equal to 0 irrespective irrespective of clock so I don't care about clock as long as my reset is 1 so how do I model that in VHDL it's simple previously I had put this if condition under the clock process or the clock condition here I will put it before so what it means is that if reset is equal to 1 then Q is 0 so as long as reset is 1 Q is 0 I don't care about my clock so this would form a asynchronous reset so if reset is equal to 0 then my this part is evaluated which we know from the if else statements that if as long as the first condition is true always these statements will be evaluated this is how I would model a asynchronous reset I hope that is clear as I said that an assignment within a clock statement will always generate a flip-flop and all other combinational circuitry will be cr created at the D input of the flip-flop which is the D input so for example if I write a VHDL code where if clock tick event and clock equal to 1 and I say that out 1 is A and B it makes a hardware like this where at the input of your D flip-flop you have an AND gate whose inputs are A and B and then that is given to the output Q at the edge of the clock okay please understand that the minute you have an assigned statement that will make a flip-flop and anything before that assigned statement will make combinational hardware so let's look at a more interesting example so let let me test you so what kind of reset will this be will this be synchronous reset or asynchronous reset this would be asynchronous reset because this if condition is above the clocked modeling well that said let's understand this example if my input 1 is 1 then my output 1 is A and B else my output 1 is C and D so what kind of hardware would this generate as I previously said that since there are two assigned statements we must have two flip-flops that is not true here because these both assigned statements are on the same signal they are on the same signal and hence they will be first evaluated as a combinational hardware so if you see that if input 1 is 1 then the output 1 which will be through a flip-flop 
will be C and D else if it is not true then it will be the other one I hope that is clear that even though you have multiple assigned statements here but if they are on the same signal or the same output or the same port if it's the same port signal or output again they will first get evaluated as a combinational hardware like this and then given to the flip-flop I hope that is clear now before I discuss slightly more advanced examples of using a clocked process I would like to quickly mention that in a system for example if you write just a simple combinational process if I say if enable equal to 1 then out 1 is A and then I don't specify an else condition this will infer a latch means out 1 is A only when enable is 1 only when enable is 1 the else condition the process does not know what to do hence it will make a latch well the reason why I'm saying that if you do not specify it completely you're going to get a latch that is fine but you should do it only if you need it you do it only if you need it because when you try and infer a latch it provides bad timing in advanced circuits so I would suggest that if you can specify an else condition if you can do it please do it if you cannot do it it's fine then you will understand that you will infer a latch now suppose if I specify an else condition here I will infer a mux okay I just wanted you all to understand that if you don't specify an else condition you will infer a latch so now let's look at an example here I have written this VHDL code can you pause the lecture and think of what hardware this will generate well let's work this design together the fact that the reset condition is above this so this is asynchronous reset okay that's great now if now another statement if I write clock tick event and clock equal to 1 a shorter way of writing this in VHDL is also as rising underscore edge so this is also acceptable that said let's understand what this hardware it will make I define a signal called as temp which is going to get A or B so there will be a flip-flop temp gets if this is Q this is D it gets A or B because this is one assigned statement and then I say out gets temp so effectively you make another flip-flop whose input D is given to temp and the output is out so please understand that every assignment gives me one flip-flop and since these two signals or ports are different I end up incurring how many flip-flops two flip-flops so 
if you write something like this you would feel that since both these temps are the same I should get something like this which is flip-flop AB temp which is then connected to out and I should get out but this is not true because inside my clock process every time that I use an assignment statement I will infer a flip-flop please be careful about that please be careful and understand that each assignment gives me a flip-flop now let's look at an example that suppose if I want to do this suppose if I want to do this exactly by making a small change in this design how do I do it I will declare my temp as a variable now and the same code please understand I now declare temp as a variable so if you see most of the design is the same to assign a variable you need to use this operator for signals you will use this operator so what I effectively do is I say temp the variable temp is assigned a or b and out gets temp which means that now I have only one assignment means one flip-flop so what effectively I do is I say I get A or B this is my temp and this temp is now consumed by out by an assignment statement which I get one flip-flop interesting right let me explain a few rules about variables you have to consume a variable inside the process itself like here since temp was a variable temp has to be consumed inside the process itself you can use temp as connections that need values immediately so since I want that this temp variable should get a and B immediately which is combinational I will use it as a variable okay let's look at another example just to make things clear what do you think this would give me again I have variable temp so I say temp is a and out and I say out is temp which is quite interesting in nature so how do I reverse engineer this how do I reverse engineer this example so let's look at this first my out must be assigned temp which is under a clock process so I will first make a flip-flop with the output out and the input as temp then I say that the temp variable is assigned a and out so I have an input a and ended with out is temp so effectively I create a circuit which is sequential and has feedback interesting right so 
this is another very interesting example of how I use a variable to create combinational logic and also have sequential logic in the same process. Now where does this come out to be useful? Where is it used? Suppose if I have multiple flip-flops in my design and they have combinational logic in between. So you have this kind of a funny circuit which has combinational logic in between sequential circuits like these. So this point, this point, this point, all these points will be defined as variables which can be consumed immediately to make combinational logic. This is very important. You will encounter this situation regularly and to do that you have to use variables okay because every assigned statement under a clock process will give you one flip-flop so I hope that this basic concept was clear so we understood the concept of clock processes we looked at different clock processes on how we can have combinational logic before that on how we can have synchronous and asynchronous reset so we saw synchronous reset we saw asynchronous reset then we saw the fact that an assigned statement generates a flip-flop and anything on the right hand side of the assigned statement would be combinational logic then we also saw that if the signal is the same then even though you have multiple assigned statements they will still generate one flip-flop then we also saw that if you make an incomplete if-else expression it will infer a latch which is bad design but if you cannot avoid it it's okay then we saw that multiple assigned statements gives you multiple flip-flops and then we saw the important concept of using variables as a part of clock process and how you can use variables to make combinational logic before sequential logic and I explained the application of that so I hope this lecture was clear I will see you in the next lecture thank you